Hello, I'm Susan Street, the owner of Vintage Jewelry Supplies Company. Today I'm going to show you how to make a necklace step by step. We're using um, oxidized copper stampings today and we're using a blue crazy lace agate pendant stone. It's top drilled so that it has a hole and you can use it mostly for wire wrapping is, was the reason for this one. It's slightly domed on the top and it's flat on the bottom so it makes it perfect for our layering technique. I'm going to use it with um, oxidized copper today because that is the hue that's found a lot in the stone. Um, sometimes when you hold a stone and look at it, it, it will tell you what metal to mount it in and what items that would go well with it. This is sort of an art deco shape. It's clean and simple lines and the colors will look wonderful with oxidized copper. Um, I chose this frame because it has specific openings you can attach jump rings and bead um, strands from. It's a great piece for that. So what I did was I put a, a little puddle of uh, E6000 glue and I took my needle tool and put only what I needed on these parts that don't have any openings. That's where you're the holding, the work is going to be done. So you put the glue on and immediately put your pendant in the correct place. Now I'm gonna, what you will need to do is let this dry for 24 hours before you can move it or use it so that it has plenty of time for the glue to set up. Um, whenever you're using filigree, if you go back, let's say it's something that's going to be showing and you've gotten glue that's coming through here and made a little bubble, you can take this needle tool and just pry it off after about an hour and just be careful not to disturb your original set. Once you set it, just leave it and let it dry and hold. The E6000 glue does a wonderful job, but you have to understand how its properties work and what will make it um, hold to its maximum, ca maximum capacity. It should be clear and stringy and come straight from a fresh tube. Always put the top right back on it when you get through using it. Um, and always use it in a well-ventilated room. Any kind of chemicals, glues, paints, anything you use, make sure you're in a well ventilated room. This is the next piece I'm going to put on, and it is a nice little filigree um, embellishment. Now it's flat, it comes to you flat, so it's going to have to be manipulated to lie properly on this slightly domed stone. So I'm going to use the flat nose pliers, and I'm going to gently bend it a little at a time so that it fits nicely and lays smoothly on this stone. And once I get it to fit properly, then I can add other embellishments. Um, for this particular uh, necklace, I added this little beetle. And that's technically, it can be used as a connector as well, but it also fit very nicely in this little space that I created with this embellishment. So that's how it's going to go for that. I'll put this aside and explain further the next step. This is a connector. Now, it has three holes and it makes a wonderful connector, but it also can be used other ways. I also used the flat nose pliers and bent it a little bit so that it would conform to the shape of the bottom of the pendant so that it appears to be a prong, a very fancy prong. Now that also created a space that I could add this nice setting and I added it with the pendant loop pointing down. And this is a nice um, bronze stone. It's Bavarian glass and it fits nicely in here and it has muted colors that relate back to this stone. Try to repeat the colors that you use in your main focal point again and again throughout your piece so that it has unity and it ties together. So that's pretty much our focal point and how it was created. Next, we're gonna move on to the strands or the connecting links so that you understand how that works. This particular bead I'm using is a blue opal bead. I'm using gemstones combined with Bavarian glass because it has such texture and interest and it makes, if you use semi-precious stones along with um, vintage glass stones, Trust me, you can ask a bigger price for your product when you sell it, and the boutique owners will also ask a much bigger price for it because it's perceived value. Um, as opposed to, say, let's say plastic. If you used lucite or plastic a lot in your products, it would have a perceived value of much less, even though you worked just as hard on the piece. Um, I'm using a nice, long, strong 
um, eye pin here and we're going to load on the beads. This is one of the little um, bead top beads in copper, which is very nice to finish off the link and make the bead look very professional, the bead cap look very professional. Then we load on our um, blue opal bead and another. And you notice I left space in between. The gothic bead caps hold, but don't necessarily fit right next to it, to the, to the bead. That creates interest. Even blank space can be interesting. So don't worry about making everything fit exactly. We're going to use those um, bail forming tools or loop forming tool that I told you about in an earlier video. Make a nice round loop. These are going to be not self-wrapping as I showed you before because I'm using a much stronger um, eye pin which can hold its own without very much reinforcement. So there you've got the link. That link is going to be joined with another link that has a filigree bead which wants to go away. This um, filigree pendant is going to be used at the bottom of the pendant that we created earlier. Forgot to mention that for you. But I'm repeating filigree with smooth over and over again. I'll make a link with this bead and I'll use a jump ring to join them together. Always use a jump ring because that allows you to have smooth function. Otherwise, if you joined two of these together, they would always lock up and not lay smoothly. It wouldn't be a good um, a function. And once again, the way you open jump rings side to side. If you open them any other way, the uh, shape will be compromised and the strength will be compromised. So always open them side by side, side to side. The next thing that would come along is that we're going to use ladder chain. This is a nice chain that has, it loops into itself. So if you just open this last loop, open it and, and pull, take that away, you've got a nice end without rough, rough edges, which you can see on this one. Always use a, a, a finding. The, the findings are the ones that do the work. Um, this is a variety of clasp here that I'm showing you. This is a hook and eye closure. I like this one a lot because even if your hands are weak, if your customer has long nails or if she has um, arthritis, this is an easy one to use to open and close and they're um, very easy to attach. Once again, always use a jump ring. It allows you to attach the clasp to the chain and it'll work smoothly. The reason I have this oxidized brass big um, lobster clasp here is to show you something that you'll always need to remember. Sometimes when the clasp get plated, the, the final step of the plating process causes this little lever here to stick. So just use your flat nose pliers and open it once like that, gently. And that breaks that lacquer loose or the sealant and makes it work again. So don't panic if it's really hard to use the first time, just use your pliers and open it one time. If you open it once or twice usually, it works very smoothly. This one works beautifully. So that's just another little tip I wanted to share with you. Now let's take a look at the final finished product so that you can see how it looks. This is the necklace. Um, if I were to sell it to a boutique and sell it at wholesale, I would, la I would ask a minimum of $56 for this. Considering the amount of time that I put into it and the gemstone beads that I used, that means that the customer, the final customer would be the boutique owner, would mark it up Keystone plus a few dollars. They usually do that to consider shipping or you know whatever process that they have to go through to make it be in their store. But you have to remember that if you're going to sell to wholesale to stores, that you must charge to your clients at a show exactly what your clients in the boutique will be shop, uh, charging. Um, that's the concept of wholesale. I hope that the products and the ideas that I've shared with you today have been helpful and that you've enjoyed this video. We'll visit you again soon. Thank you.